on the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello everyone, I'm News Channel 5's political analyst Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Metro Vice Mayor David Briley. He's the presiding officer of the Nashville's 40-member council. That group is dealing with several major issues in the weeks to come, including the new $5 billion plus transit plan for Nashville. So we invited him to come discuss that matter with us, as well as a number of other decisions that the city and the council have been facing recently, including the new MLS soccer stadium. Mr. Vice Mayor, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me today. The big news this week was certainly the announcement of the details of uh, Mayor Barry's now $5 billion transit plan for Nashville and the taxing, tax financing for that. Uh, you introduced her at the opening uh, uh, event, uh, had some nice things to say, so I assume you're supportive of this project. I am supportive of it. I think it's the right way for our city to go. Now, um, it's going to be perhaps the toughest vote that you have to sell people on because people may be in favor of something, but not necessarily if it comes to raising their taxes. So what's the strategy? How do you tell people this is, yes, something we need to do? Well, I think, uh, as, I, as I've said before, our future prosperity and quality of life is on the line. And I think if people don't make the decision right now to make an investment to build out the kind of city we know will be prosperous in the future, they'll come to regret it. And so the, the great thing about the plan that the mayor's brought forward is it's the culmination of work of lots of people in the city. We've had multiple plans. They all reached the conclusion that we needed a comprehensive, uh, multifaceted approach to dealing with our transportation issue. And so this is this is the the end of the work uh, of a lot of people in the in this town. It, it, she's not to uh, she didn't reach this conclusion on her own. So I think people at the end are going to support the, the, the real cost and the sacrifice that will be necessary for us to build it out. Of course, the first question in the process is getting it on the ballot, which right. is what the council has to do, particularly the tax the uh, the taxing part of it. Right. Uh, that's a little unusual for people. It takes a two-thirds or 27 votes in the council to do that. No, I think it just takes a majority of the, of the council. This is not like putting on a charter it amendment? It is not like putting a charter so amendment So there's on. a lower threshold. There's a lower threshold. That. So uh, I expect that by January of 2018, we'll have the actual legislation uh, required to do that. We would vote on it. I think we have to have our final vote on that by the first meeting in February so that it could make the uh, May vote. But it's not like a charter amendment. It's not quite as difficult. Um, in this particular situation, uh, how do you how do you see going forward what's your process for doing this when would you like to get the legislation and what I assume this is may perhaps more than one ordinance, perhaps more than one resolution, or is it one piece of legislation? It'll be one piece of legislation. Uh, there is a question still about whether or not it'll be a resolution or an ordinance. The state uh, law allows for either one, but we do have a piece of legislation at the council right now that would require it to be done by ordinance. So I expect that'll probably pass. So we would get an ordinance that um, sometime in either December or January. And those in the audience, just to explain it to them, there is a right. difference between a resolution and ordinance in terms of the number of votes it takes. Right, a resolution uh, only requires one vote. Uh, an ordinance requires three readings at the at the council before it can be enacted as law. It, between now and then, I th there will be a whole series of meetings across the community where both the mayor and the council gets an opportunity to hear from the public about exactly how they feel about the mayor's plan and about the, the, the required taxes. I also heard you say at the opening event that, you, that your goal in this process in part, because you don't have a vote unless there's a tie vote, and I don't think that's likely, but uh, your your process, your goal is to make sure that everybody who wants to be heard feels like they have been heard. Right. There's no obligation that we have a public hearing at all uh, in, 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 in the context of the legislation coming to the council. But we've been working hard over the first two years of this term to make sure we get more public input. So we'll have some town halls slash public hearings across the community before the council votes on it, it's just so we can hear from everybody. Let's talk about the tax package. Some say it's already the largest ever if it was passed in the city's history. It's a total of one cent increase in the local sales tax over a number Thanks, of Dan. years. A three eight cent increase in the room tax, again over a number of years. A 20% right. church charge on rental cars and on the local business and excise tax. Uh, it's already seeing stories in the media that say this will put us at least in terms of the sales and uh, room taxes almost at the largest or the most of the largest in the nation. Uh, is it worth it? 
Well, I think it absolutely is worth it. The, the, the issue for us as a community is are we going to continue to be prosperous and provide opportunity for, uh, for everyone who lives here to, to make their way forward, to have a job. Uh, transit and transportation is the, the, the narrowness out there in the river, and we've got to get through it. The only way to do it is to make these kind of investments. I think it's important to note that the sales tax, about 47% of the sales tax is paid by people who don't live in the county. It's paid by visitors and commuters. So we're asking people who use our city, who come here, to pay a significant part of the of the of the cost of building this. And we, the mayor acknowledges, and and I do, that uh, the sales tax is regressive, and so it will have a disparate impact on the poor in our community. So we're trying to balance that by um, providing free transportation in the system to people at 100 percent or or below the poverty line and a discounted rate to people at 200 percent and below as well so and then on top of that we'll we'll have some attainable housing that gets built along these corridors to address the the, the needs of the, our lower earners in our community nashville is also a community throughout the county but particularly downtown with a lot of bedrock not far below the surface right. It appears the only way to get this through, this was rumored during the process, but the mayor confirmed that a lot of now we're going to have to build a tunnel underground of about two miles in length, and a lot of it's going to have to be through rocks. Right. She says that the, the, the drilling process has gotten better. That's true. And that this can be done a little bit more cost effectively because one of the reasons that we pay for sewers the way we do in this community is that there was too much rock to don't right. take, leave it on the property tax. So, right. right. It, so the process has gotten better. We, um, in but a the, billion dollars just to do the tunnel that's downtown, right that's nine. a lot. That is, is a gonna, lot of is money. Is going to have to people get used to that? I think people are going to have to get used to that. But frankly, uh, the only way for us to build a system that will work is to move people through downtown in, a, in an efficient manner and the only way really to move people around downtown efficiently is to go underground. Uh, I think we saw when we looked at the AMP that um, the streets on 5th and, and Lower Broad and places like that. The, the, the turn radius is too. It's, it's just very difficult to do it downtown without going underground. Yeah, it's, it is a significant bold investment in the future of our community. But I think if you look back at those bold investments and decisions we've made in the past, every single one of them has paid off for the community, whether it's the Titans or consolidation or fighting English only or building the convention center. I think we all look back and say, well, those were the right decisions for our community. And, and I'm confident that we will do the same thing again. Vice Mayor David votes, but Vice Mayor David Riley is our guest here on Inside Politics. I'll get it out in a minute. And we're back to continue our conversation with him after this break.